and welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacey. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. Our guest is Ian Kahn, author of Meaningful Conversations and three-time TEDx speaker. Welcome to the show, Ian. Thanks a lot, uh, Bob. Stacey, it's a pleasure to be here. So I have a bunch of questions for you. First, we only have 17 minutes, and there's I know through your technology talks, you talk about Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. In one minute or less, can you first explain what Internet of Things means? Great question, uh, Stacey. The Internet of Things really means that when everything is connected to the Internet in some way or the other, and these devices uh, perform a function and send back information, how do we use that information and what can we do by doing by by connecting everything to the internet this is your car this is mm-hmm. a kitchen equipment this is your refrigerator so that's really the power of internet of things okay uh, that the was the one, b- that was the best really fast explanation i actually interviewed somebody recently on the internet of things and af- after i interviewed him i'm like i still don't really understand what that <laughs> means <laughs> all right next one artificial intelligence tell us in 30 seconds what artificial intelligence is So artificial intelligence is when machines start making decisions based on a certain logic that they have already been provided. Now, there's a concept of machine-to-machine learning where devices are able to perform functions based on their previous calculations that they've done. So if you've seen the movies like Terminator and and a bunch of those, Mm -hmm. uh, machines don't have their own intelligence but they've got the experience of making thousands and millions of decisions in the past that they use to make newer decisions. And that's what artificial intelligence is. Now, extrapolated, it becomes very complex, uh, where uh, complex decisions uh, can be made using uh, machines, Mm -hmm. but based on the algorithms that feed them and based on what we tell them what to do in certain circumstances. And that's what really artificial intelligence is. Okay. The last one is the hardest because I have read articles on this subject. I still totally do not get what blockchain is. So let's see if you can explain in layman (laughs) terms what blockchain is. I'll do my best. So blockchain really uh, is, is the idea of a distributed ledger. Imagine this in a very simple context. You've got an accountant. Your accountant has... Uh, you know, a big ledger, a physical ledger in which the accountant stores all the information. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the traditional model of a database where everything is stored in one place. Now, if this ledger is now distributed to the Internet, to hundreds and millions of different nodes where the same information is stored, and every time something changes in one place, every node is updated with that information, that's your distributed ledger. Hmm. And that's really the concept behind blockchain, that it's no longer stored in one place and it's stored in multiple, multiple hundreds and thousands of places. So changing things and stealing things and hacking into things, it becomes very impossible because there's a security mechanism that keeps check on what changed where. And as a result, it's, it's really impossible to, uh, to crack the code or to hack into something. And that's really the fundamental idea behind blockchain. Okay, so as a business owner, so many of the people that listen to our show are business owners or salespeople, and we are living in a world that is so fast-paced as far as technology changes. How would you recommend that your average business owner or salesperson just stay on top of technology? Great question. See, the challenge with technology is, that we often confuse the applications of technology with the actual technology. Mm -hmm. The average business person who's got their business decisions to make, uh, you know, the salesperson who's got their sales to do, I don't think they need to know, uh, you know, at a higher level what goes behind the scenes when we talk about technology. But they need to know the implications of that technology. For example, if you're banking with a a bank, It's great to know what technology they're using and how that technology affects you. So if Mm -hmm. your bank was to implement blockchain in the next five years, you would really uh, benefit from that because it helps, uh, you know, your transactions be more secure. It'll help you uh, have more peace of mind that nobody's going to hack into my account. 
but you but you necessarily do not need to know how blockchain works and how these distributed ledgers create security. So I think we need to separate the complexity of technology from the applications of technology. And in my opinion, the actual, uh, you know, the actual beauty lies in the application of technology because uh, it's the solutions that drive where technology is going tomorrow. Uh, so the power actually lies in the hands of the people who are, who are the end users because they come up with the problems for which technologies, uh, you know, create a solution. The average business owner, the average person who, who's out there, uh, in my opinion, needs to be aware of the developments that are taking place. They need to be updated with news and, and you know, podcasts such as yours, uh, but not necessarily take such a deep dive that it becomes confusing. Okay. So tell us what your newest book, I know you have a bunch of books out, Make Me Like You, 21 Steps to Get Ahead, uh, The Internet of Things and the Future of Innovation. Tell us what your newest book that's coming out, Meaningful Conversations, is all about. Great. So Meaningful Conversations is a result of, uh, you know, the last uh, 20 years of my work within the industry. And uh, having worked with uh, a ton of companies from startups to medium-sized companies to manufacturing to healthcare um, um, across verticals and across the world, uh, it's really a distilled-down version of what I felt is the true uh, calling and true way uh, to create value within, uh, you know, today's uh, disruptive, technologically disruptive time. Uh, there's too much noise in the world when it comes to technology and how it's changing everything and how, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how our attention spans are, are, are less than that of a goldfish today. Uh, and the challenge with all of that is that we get lost in, in the details, we get lost in the noise, and we forget that you know we have the ability uh, to create value in our own hands. Um, if you look at stats, employee dissatisfaction is rising, uh, engagement is becoming a tough nut to crack for organizations, and really we're wasting a lot more time uh, spending on uh, on YouTube looking at cat videos while we should be doing something that actually creates value. Mm -hmm. So meaningful conversations is a step back from from this entire technology con you know uh, confusion, and it's about what can you really do in in simple steps to change your 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 value proposition to the world? How can you have a better quality of life for yourself? And we're separating ourselves from the financial aspect of life. Money is just one part of life. It's a good part. It's, it's a very significant uh, part of our lives. But money is not the only part in our life that, that means value. Uh, there's a lot more, lot more to value creation than uh, just the financial aspect. So Meaningful Conversation is actually a story about our protagonist who's very successful uh, and he's got everything. You know, he's worked hard, got everything what he needs, and he undergoes uh, you know, certain situations in his life that take him through uh, some very dramatic ups and downs. And uh, he ends up uh, in a place that is, uh, uh, that actually is, um, uh, you know, part of his roots. And he, he's, he's immersed into the seven axioms of value creation in, in that, uh, in a remote region, uh, you know, among some beautiful mountain, mountain country in the world. And the lessons he learns there are, are really uh, something that propels him forward and opens up his mind to uh, what the possibilities are and what really value creation means. So Meaningful Conversations is a book that can be read by individuals, by thought leaders, uh, by politicians, and really make the world into, into a better place. Uh, the, 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 the power in the book is about its simplicity, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's very easy to understand and read. Uh, and, and really, if we all followed the seven actions within the book, I think we would create a tremendous amount of value for ourselves. We would uh, live a much happier life. And, you know, if, if money was a goal for you, you would, you would mm -hmm. actually probably end up making a lot more money than you right. are right now and be a very successful in your career as well. Okay. Uh, but it's, but it's, it's about understanding what really, what it really means is to create value, and uh, that's what the book is about. Okay, so you described me at the beginning that I am the person that has the attention span of a goldfish, and it's because of the, <laughs> it's because I wasn't like this my entire life, 
But now I'm like constantly, I can't even like relax at night because I hear a ding on a phone and it might not even be a ding of a phone. It could be another noise off a TV, but I think I just got a text message. So it's like you cannot escape. So you say that you share in the book seven steps to create a better value proposition for your life. Can you share with our listeners one of the steps that you would recommend? Absolutely, Stacey, and that's such a great point. I mean, we today we live in an age of distraction. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if you fast forwarded our life 50 years from now and imagine we are 50 years ahead and you look back into time and you think about 2017 and you think, how distracted were we in 2017, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I think it would look really silly, just like we look things 100 years ago, how, you know, how things were not technologically advanced. We would say, wow, that was the age when the internet had just started off and we had these cell phones and right. we all were glued to our cell phones. Now, we don't know in the future how that engagement would have changed. But, but the point is, it's all about perspective. How do we interact with our environment? What are we able to give away to gain what? Now, the, in the age of distraction today, we're sacrificing our time and we're utilizing that time and spending it on the TV, on the Internet yeah. uh, and doing whatever we do, uh, you know, to, to stay in touch with people. But I think the idea behind, uh, you know, creating value out of your life should be more about, you know, what how is my time best utilized today so that it can be useful in some other way. Now, within the book. I talk about seven different actions, Mm -hmm. and they really have nothing to do with technology. They're not about, you know, switch off your cell phone at night because Mm -hmm. it'll create value for you or or do something else. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. But let me tell you about uh, the action number six. So one of the points in my book is about helping others achieve their goals, really, and it's not about us anymore. And it might seem uh, a bit strange that in order to, you know, create value and, and achieve your goals and your targets, why am I helping somebody else? But that's really the essence of value creation. That's just one of the points within the book. Now, when you start thinking as a value creator, when you start thinking from the perspective of I'm going to create value, you've got to separate yourself a little bit uh, and be uh, not, not so personal about it. When you start helping other people, and of course, uh, you know, you're aligning your, who you're helping, how you're helping them, by with your skills and your you know your expertise uh you're actually setting up a chain reaction for value creation and trust me that will come back to you in many many different ways uh once that chain starts uh you will find that other people are ready to help you achieve your goals and that's just one of uh, the the seven points within the book uh that's uh, not about money it's not about uh you know it's not about you but it's about, again, creating value. And the other six points are very similarly aligned, uh, you know, to to being valuable uh, to the environment around you. Uh, You know, overall, the Meaningful Conversation book does not talk about anything new that we don't know about already. Mm -hmm. You know, the writers in the world, the, the philosophers, the scientists have already talked about so many different things over over the ages that I don't think anything new can be invented. But in the age of distraction, what happens is that we're distracted from everything. We are distracted from our everyday goals, responsibilities, roles. And then we end up finding a week later, 10 days later, that, hey, I, I don't have the things that I should have had or I haven't done the things that I've done. So if you look at uh, the meaningful conversations as a pathway for everyday living, then uh, then you've uh, you know you've got something uh, in your hand. Hmm. So we only have a couple minutes left and I was reading in your bio that you have a wife and son and I'm curious I have a 7-year-old daughter and she's absolutely as technology addicted as I am. The kid constantly is on an iPad or an iPhone and I was wondering if there's anything that you've done with your son to make sure that he's having a meaningful life and creating a better value proposition for himself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my son is a year and a half old. Oh, and so he's not addicted yet. It's a big challenge. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but hey, listen, this is, it is such a challenge to keep him entertained that, uh, that I cannot take technology out of the equation. So 
Uh, this is, and this is what we, we, we try to do is, you know, we give him his technology time. We, we show him the educational and, and mm-hmm. the learning cartoons. But then I also make sure that I'm taking him out in nature and I'm, right. I'm going on long walks with him. I'm taking him out and showing him new things. So I'm exposing him to all of those elements as well and not just getting him to sit in front of the TV the whole day. Gotcha. I think there is a place for technology in our world in our lives and we cannot say no to it because it brings so much value to us. Right. Uh, businesses are becoming more productive. Our lives are more enriched. But I think there's also a limitation and a, and a boundary that we should carve out for ourselves and, and say, hey, you know what, this is, this is too much or I don't think I need this right now. And I think that ability to create those boundaries is really what will separate you from, uh, from wasting your time to really utilizing your time and, and nurturing your life in, uh, in a much better way. So with my son, it, it's, it's a constant uh, struggle, but, but I think, I think uh, we've got it under control. Hmm. Good stuff. Excellent. Where can people learn more about you and buy your books? So uh, you can learn more about me on my website at www.iankhan.com. And uh, my books are available on uh, on Amazon.com. Just Google my name, uh, Amazon, my name there, and uh, I'll, I'll come up. All right. Awesome stuff. That was Ian Khan. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ian. Thanks so much. Thank you, Stacey and Bob. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Get Real. Make sure you join us again next weekend for more.